Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Canada Day. A gorgeous day. It's July the 1st. I'm down at Harbour Front here. What could be better than this? Beautiful weather, slight waves on the lake, and curiously enough, I'm right in front of the Toronto Harbour Front wave deck. And the reason that's important is because today we're going to be looking at how to handle wave files in Scilab and Psychoslab. In our previous lecture, we looked at how to uh, use structures in Scilab and Psychoslab, and today we're going to look at wave files. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to set our working directory uh, because we're going to be generating some files. We want to save them. So what you have to do is go into change directory and set the directory where you're going to keep all your files. So if you if you type pwd print working directory, you'll see that I've stored them. Uh, in a folder called Psychos Lab Webinar Number Eight. So what I've got here is I've opened the same script file I had when we looked at structures, and what I'm doing here is I'm creating a simple um, cosine wave. The frequency is one kilohertz. Uh, but in this particular instance, I'm going to sample at 48 uh, kilohertz. The reason for that is we're going to create a wave file, and the wave file is going to use our sound card on our PC and uh, for modern sound cards uh, typically sampling rates are around 48 kilohertz uh, when you're looking at digital modems. The reason I use WAV files is when I'm working with HF radio uh, we're creating digital modems that interface with the single sideband uh, USB input on the sound side. Uh, in a single sideband transceiver you have a bandwidth of let's say 300 hertz to 2700 hertz. So typically what I do is I create a signal in the Psychos Lab Editor console. Then I use a structure, as we discussed in the previous video, to get that signal into the video block or the um, visual block editor of Psychos where I can do various measurements. Now I also create a WAV file. The purpose of the WAV file is you can, first of all, listen to the signal. And the other thing you can do with it is you can use the WAV file and in, input it into a digital modem monitoring uh, software such as MultiPSK or FLDigi. We'll look at that uh, at a next video, but let's look at the signal right now. So I've got my cosine wave here. I'm sampling at 48 kilohertz. I'm also going to uh, save about five seconds before we only went up to 10 milliseconds to get 10 periods, but now I want to listen to the signal, so I'm going to save uh, up to five seconds and I'm going to create my structure here v dot values and v dot time so let's execute this load it into scilab it's going to take a while now because we're creating quite a few samples five seconds at 48 kilohertz now here's my output graph notice it's very dense because I've got so many uh, uh, more samples I've got up to five seconds now I could zoom in here and just look at the beginning and we'll see our familiar sine wave that we did last time. Hopefully. There we go. Okay, so there's the sine wave before. Okay, now the next step is we want to create our wave file. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open a script file called wave write. So let's look at this. What we're doing now is we're going to define a new variable z, and z will be v dot values. Okay, so that's V was, uh, if we type in here, uh, V, V was the structure we created, right? It was uh, 24,000 24, rows in one column. Okay, so um, that was the values of our cosine wave. Now here we have to, um, we have to do a transpose here, Z equals Z transpose or, or uh, slash here because uh, in the wave write function let's look at the wave write function I'm going to take Z this is a sample rate 48 kilohertz and this is the file that's going to be written to now if I don't if I just say Z equals V dot values what I'm going to create is I'm going to create 48,000 channels so if you look at the help let's look at the help function for wave write It'll, it'll show you the syntax. Let's take this in here.
There's way right. So there's the structure for wave right. Okay. And why are the values? Now, if I don't, um, if I don't invert the column vector to a row vector here with this command, what happens is I don't get the right uh, wave right structure. So that's the tricky thing here. You've got to do this particular line here. So let's do that. Okay, it takes a minute. And down here, you'll see that I'm writing a WAV file. It's one channel, uh, 4,800 uh, 48, uh, kilohertz sampling rate, and 16 bits per sample. Okay, we can go into Audacity. Let's go back here. There's Audacity. And I've opened this test wave. Just close it and I'll open it again. Let's open the file again, the one I've just created. There it is, test. And down here it says it's at 48, uh, 48 kilohertz. That's the sampling rate. It's a mono file, so it's only just one channel. And let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so what we've done then, just to recap, we've taken our cosine wave, we increased our sampling frequency to 48 kilohertz, or 48 kilosamples per second, and we used uh, this particular script file to create a wave file, which we called test.wave. We had to be careful to change our directory. If you don't change your directory, test.wave will be saved uh, somewhere within the Psychos lab structure, so you'll have to go and find it. So it's better to set your directory to begin with. Uh, in the WaveWrite process here, you're specifying the sample rate, and you're specifying Z, which is the values. Z will have to be uh, transposed again here. Uh, if you don't do this, uh, what's going to happen is you'll get the wrong wave file. Let's try that just for fun. Let's uh, So I've just commented that out. Let's execute this again and see what happens. See what happens, it screws it up here, you get 43,000 channels, so it doesn't do it properly. So that's the, that's the reason we have to do this.